Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is September 22. Today in our daily Bible reading, we read what for many is a very familiar story. It is a familiar story even to many people who are not necessarily churchgoers or not necessarily Bible readers. This is the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Now, because it is familiar and because it is a very short reading, I want to take a little bit more time today with some specific things that are said in the story that may be easily overlooked, but there are a number of powerful things to consider about Daniel, about his nature, about his character, about his relationship with God. But remember all the while, this is not a story even about Daniel. It is a story about God. So when we begin the reading today, we read that it pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with three administrators over them. Now, one of these administrators, we're told, is Daniel. So he is in a position appointed by the king as one of the three highest officials in the land. Well, as you might expect, this makes all of those who are his contemporaries, his peers, a little bit jealous. They want to take Daniel down. But we read that Daniel so distinguished, distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king even planned to set him over the whole kingdom. So not only is he one of the top three, he is so different, so unique in his ex beautiful qualities, his extreme devotion to God, that all of this can be evidenced by the king, and he wants Daniel to have an even higher position. Well, at this, the administrators and the satraps start to look for charges to bring against Daniel. They're looking for some dirty laundry, as is common in politics even today. They want to air out some problem, some grievance, some sin in his life so that maybe he can be taken down a notch. But when they looked for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, they were unable to find anything wrong. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Think about that. They couldn't find a thing on him. And notice this. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against the man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. The only way we're going to get him is religiously or spiritually. And so the administrators and the satraps go as a group to the king and they say this, O King Darius, live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered. So King Darius does that. Now, what I want to point out to you is, is that these leaders go to the king and they say, we have all met together and we have all agreed that prayer should be prohibited for the next 30 days unless the prayer is directed to you, O king. But did all of the administrators meet? Isn't Daniel one of the ones we're told at the beginning is an administrator? And yet it appears he was not invited to that meeting. It appears that he had nothing to do with this decree. But once the decree is made, it is sealed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which means biblically that can't be changed or altered in any way. But I want you to notice what Daniel does when he finds out about the decree. When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Daniel is consistent in his faith. Even when a decree has been made that if anyone is caught praying to anyone other than the king in the next 30 days, he will be thrown into a lion's den, 
Daniel still does what he does every day. He opens his doors toward Jerusalem, his windows toward Jerusalem, and he prays three times a day. Nothing alters his pattern. Now, his attackers, his accusers know that about him. They know they can find no weakness in him, and so they're lying in wait. And of course, they're going to find Daniel doing exactly what they knew Daniel would do. That tells us something about Daniel's character as well. They know that he will not balk. They know that he will not change his pattern. So then they go as a group and they say, well, King Darius, you made this decree and you said that anyone who prays to anyone other than you over the next 30 days will be thrown into a den of lions. You sealed it with the, as a law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be altered. And guess what? Daniel, you know, the one that you have favored so much, they're thinking, he's the one that we caught. He's the one that's been praying. And so the king knows that there's nothing he can do about it. And so he gives the order and they bring Daniel and they throw him into the lion's den. And the king says to Daniel, note this, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. That's a great plea, a great prayer, isn't it? So a stone is brought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king seals it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and notice this, he spends the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him. He cannot sleep. Why? Why is his sleep so disturbed? Why is his regular routine upset? because he doesn't want Daniel to die. He knows that Daniel serves a God that can rescue him, and he's hoping and praying that God will do just that. We read that at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lion's? Boy, listen to the power packed into that question. Has the God whom you serve continually, has he been able to rescue you? Of course he has. Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight nor have I ever done wrong before you, O king. So the king is overjoyed and he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. But not only that, when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him of any kind. And we're told the reason for that, because he trusted in his God. Well, not only that, the king's command at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and they themselves are thrown into the lion's den. And along with their wives and children, they're thrown in. And the text says, before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. They meet their own untimely death for all these false accusations. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree in every part of my kingdom. People must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For, notice this, his testimony, God is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. A great testimony given by a pagan king, the king of Babylon, the king who saw that Daniel is a man of God that Daniel was innocent, that God was able, and God did rescue him. And now he himself wants all people everywhere to acknowledge Daniel's God as the God of all creation. That's why it is so easy for us to say the story is not about Daniel. The story is not about the king. The story is about God. Our God is able. Our God is in control. Let's, like Daniel, serve him continually. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. 
I hope you have a blessed day.